breakfast and this isn't the greatest breakfast but <laughs> sure beats what I had for dinner last night so last night was pretty crazy and the first thing that I want to say is thank you to everyone for all of the support throughout this situation I'm not very good at breakups at all and I won't lie I was pretty down and out last night so because of that I wanted to go out last night I definitely did not want to sit in this hotel room alone wallowing in my misery with only my guitar didn't want to do that I wanted to get a couple of drinks I wanted to kind of try to forget about what was going on and while doing so I met some people last night and I heard some pretty crazy damn stories and in this video I want to tell you just what last night was really like so I was by myself last night in a bar that I didn't know anyone in I'm sitting there drinking my Bud Light and the first person that I met was a guy who was playing pool his name was Dundee I thought it was a pretty interesting name so I asked him I said hey why do they call you Dundee he said well you know crocodile Dundee but it was just ironic talking with Dundee last night um, I told him I've never been in here before and he said that's okay I, you know I haven't been in here for like a year I was gone and it was crazy that when he said that he had been gone, uh, I was already able to piece together the fact that gone meant he was locked up. I think when you have been locked up, you can kind of pick up on those type of things. So I asked Dundee, I said, well, where were you? He said, Camp 25, Botetourt. I know exactly where that place is, though I've never been there. But it was just crazy that the first person I meet last night is a guy who was in prison. And we were able to just talk about what life was like locked up and also what it's been like since being released. Dundee told me that he had been home for a little over a year just like me and that he was doing good he had a job he was working as a delivery driver for some sort of construction equipment and it was really awesome to be able to talk to this guy last night another individual who had been locked up came home from that and was able to find success for himself but this is where the story begins to get crazy because while talking with Dundee last night this older woman who he knew from this bar came up to him as me and him were talking and she basically put her arm right around him and said who's your friend here oh my god why do you talk like that this woman I swear to you she was older way older if I had to guess her age I would probably say she was about 70 if you were to look up the definition for cougar um, this woman's picture would probably be right beside it because as soon as this woman saw me last night a new guy in the bar that she had never seen before obviously this woman was some sort of a local here she immediately zeroed in on me and I became the prime target for this woman this certainly was not what I was looking for last night again I just wanted to get some drinks and just try to uh, wallow in my misery just a little bit but also just try to have a good time as well and not saying that this woman wasn't nice in fact she was a little too nice maybe a little too aggressive but I remember somewhat through my Budweiser fog from last night that she asked me she said why have I never seen you in here before I'm not sure I will ever forget uh, just how raspy her voice actually was why have I never seen you in here before almost reminded me of that movie the shining red rum red rum her voice was actually pretty terrifying but when she asked me why she had never seen me in this bar before the only response that I could even muster was the fact that well one I had never been here before and two I also said trying to throw in a little prison pun I said well that's because I'm fresh meat definitely the wrong choice of words because as soon as I mentioned anything dealing with meat this woman's eyes absolutely bulged out of her head and for some reason I couldn't help but feel that she was thinking 
Possibly she had just hit the jackpot. It wasn't soon after that I realized a conversation with this older woman just wasn't something I was wanting to do. Obviously this woman was a local. She was also a drunk. I mean it was written all over her face that she probably spent every free moment she had in this bar preying on fresh meat like me. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little worried that this woman may actually try to roofie me last night. So as nice as I possibly could, I said, uh, Cougar Kathy, it's been a real pleasure meeting you, but I think I'm gonna go over here now. I also ended up meeting two other chicks last night. I have no idea what their name was, if even they told me their names. If they did, it probably went in one ear and out the other. I do, however, remember how the conversation started. I couldn't help but notice how one of these two chicks was completely covered in tattoos. So I went up and I asked her where she got her work done at. And she told me that she had gotten it done in Chicago. And from there, we just began talking. I told them how I also was a tattoo artist. Though all of my tattooing skills I've learned came from prison. And in most cases, when you mention the fact that you have been in prison, uh, people become very standoffish. You've been to prison? I'm going over here. But when I mentioned that, this one chick who was covered in tattoos responded saying, Oh my God, that is so crazy. One of my tattoo artists is actually on his way to prison right now. Damn, that sucks. Sorry for him. But while we continued to talk, I did mention the fact how I was just dealing with a breakup today. And again, the same chick who was covered in tattoos was dealing with what she considered a similar situation. Oh my God, that's so crazy. Me too, she said. But when she told me the circumstances surrounding uh, her situation, they were nothing like what I was dealing with. In fact, they were a hell of a lot worse. This tattoo covered chick who I cannot possibly remember her name for the life of me. I'm beginning to wonder if she even told me her name. She told me how on this past Valentine's Day, which is like five days ago, her lifelong best friend, a dude, called her up, or I think she said he FaceTimed her. He FaceTimed her on her phone to profess to her his lifelong love of this tattoo covered chick. Telling her something along the lines of how he felt like they belonged together, how they were soulmates, how he was so in love with her, and how he just wanted them to be together. Uh, she told me that this was something that completely blew her away. She was not prepared for this at all. She considered this lifelong friend more of a brother than actually somebody she would be with. And she told him this. Then she went on to tell me how two hours after this FaceTime conversation she had with this dude, his mother calls her to tell her that he had in fact killed himself. He shot and killed himself after basically professing his love to his lifelong friend and how she had basically uh, not reciprocated those feelings. I mean, hearing this was fucking tragic. She told me she now had to prepare for a funeral, how his body was to be cremated, and when cremated, his ashes were actually gonna be packed into 22 shell casing bullets that she was gonna get turned into a necklace that she could wear around her neck forever. I didn't quite understand why she wanted to do this, but she said he shot himself. He shot and killed himself because of me. I feel totally at fault for his death and I want to wear those bullets around my neck as a constant reminder of what happened to him. That's pretty fucking heavy. After hearing this story, I had pretty much had enough. I don't think I could have taken it anymore. I was out by myself. Anxiety was killing me. I had nobody to talk to except for these random strangers that I was meeting last night. And though in all cases, they were nice, uh, it was just a little too much. I didn't stay out late at all last night. I probably drank like four beers. And then I came back to my new home here and basically just passed out. Uh, but not before eating my Skittles dinner, of course. I do have another pack of Skittles. This could potentially be my lunch. Last night was pretty crazy. The first person I met last night, Dundee, had been in prison and also had been released for about the same amount of time I had and was doing well for himself. I also met Cougar Kathy last night, who was quite a character herself, and also the tattoo covered chick who had her best friend who blew his brains out behind her like just five days ago, and her friend as well who 
I can't remember it all. I just think that now as I try to move on with my life, try to continue after prison show completely on my own from wherever the hell that I will be, I'm gonna be meeting quite a few interesting people. And I'm quite sure there will be stories to tell about all of them as well. One thing is certain though, I'm not as depressed today as I was yesterday. I'm quite sure I will deal with moments where I will feel sad. And when dealing with those moments, I'm gonna have to just pick myself up and say, let's go, Joe. We gotta keep moving forward. Again, I just wanna take the time to thank every single one of you for the love and support that you have shown after Prison Show during this crazy time. The support of the APS Army slash family is a big part of me being able to pull myself through this. So again, thank you. Hey look, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and these crazy stories about these crazy people I met last night. And if you did, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought of this. And as always, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!